Hi, Shalom everyone. I'm continuing this fantastic series of the Daphne Army. This is what it's all about. Mesechet Baba Batra over here. We are on page 126. It's naturally Kuf Chavav in Mesechet Tractate Baba Batra in of itself. We'll kick it underway. This amazing series. We've already co- covered the 125 installments. This is the uh, 125th installment over here. And we're talking all about in today's page about estate planning counter to Torah law. We actually, actually naturally know that according to Jewish law, this question is posed. Can someone write a will so that his estate will be divided up according to his own wishes and desires after, let's say, the time of his passing? So the Torah law actually relates over in the Sefer Devarim in chapter 21. It describes this in the verses 15 to 17 over there. And it makes it clear that the double portion belonging to the firstborn cannot be transferred to another child, even to the firstborn child of, let's say, the preferred wife. Let's say in those days, uh, a man could have several wives uh, in, in uh, previous days, uh, uh, thousands of years ago, at the time when the Gemara was written. According to the Mishnah on today's specific Duff page, a father will also be unable to cut one of his sons out of the inheritance. All of these acts are considered to be, let's say, I'll use a uh, Hebrew terminology, matne alma shekatuv ba Torah. He's making a condition that negates over here Torah law, which is considered null and void. So at the same time, the Mishnah has a recommendation for a parent who wants to divide up, let's say, his wealth as he sees fit. He can give his property away to his children, or for that matter, to anyone he wants while he is still alive. Even if he arranges to give away all of his money so that there is none left in the state at the time of his passing, he has every right to do what he wants with his money when he is alive. The only prohibition would be for someone to try, let's say, abrogate the biblical laws of inheritance. So the Gemara actually is going to point out that the fact that halacha, will not let someone choose to will his property to whoever he wants after his passing, appears to negate a principle taught by the great rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda, who rules that, Tenai share b'mamon kayam. What does this mean? That with regard to money matters, a person can choose to make a condition that does not follow Torah law. So the example, this uh, a specified example, brought by the Talmud, is when someone marries a woman and makes it conditional on his not being obligated to clothe or support her. He stipulates this. Biblically mandated requirements, this is a, which uh, obviously we have to look at Parashat Mishpatim in Sefer Shemot on chapter 21, verse 10. Rabbi Yehud over there rules that he can arrange for a marriage under those conditions. Now, the Gemara, the Talmud, distinguishes between two scenarios and cases, arguing that in the case of marriage, The woman agrees to the condition. So let's say in such an apparent case, uh, such a case would not be viewed as an abrogation of Torah law, but as the wife's choice to relinquish rights that are coming to her. So that is very interesting. Friends, I've taken this uh, insight here from Rabbi Adin Steinsaltz. Excellent notes. He's got a website out there, steinsaltz.org. I think he's pretty much covered the whole of... uh, <clears throat> the whole encompassment of the Dafyomi cycle. He's got excellent books, Gemara books, on the Quran edition of the Gemara in Hebrew, English, excellent, excellent pictures. I've used this from his uh, excellent website over there. Wishing you all a good day. We've already covered, as we say before, 125 videos on this Masechet. And uh, enjoy. Wishing you all a great night.